friends, and welcome to the LCS Challengers League presented by Turo and our partners at Subway. Guys, this is not just any old LCS Challengers League today, too. It is the LCS Challengers League Summer Promotion Tournament to Woo! see who can book their tickets into the league for next spring. And to help me out, we have our four OQ teams playing today, and we have two of some of the best casters that we have covering OQs all split. It's a pleasure to be joined by Grapes and Elk Battery today. Grapes, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. You know why? If there's ever a disagreement between us on the desk, we win two to one. So qualifiers <laughs> versus versus NACL, I mean, it's just too easy. There we go. That's what I like to hear. We have a takeover going on. Funnily enough, I actually haven't been able to work with Cubby for like years. So this is like, usually we're like, a, one of us is on desk, the other one's on the yeah. cast. So this is, is going to be a fun time, especially for all three of us. And we've, hopefully we've got some good games ahead of us because our qualifier teams have been waiting. It is fun. I I'm glad that I get to be in this seed elk battery. I, I know that when it comes to OQs, a lot of the times those teams actually play while we're prepping to go yeah. live at this time yeah. for NACL. So the fact that we have the two experts with us today really help us get to know some of these teams and some of the faces that we are not as familiar with, I'm very thankful for. But we also have some informational videos for you guys just to know what's going on this week is, yeah, LCS Challenge League, it's kind of back for one week to see what is up in spring. So to let you know what the format of this week's tournament is, we have Sierra has everything covered just for you. Welcome to the LCS Challengers League Summer Promotion Tournament. I'm Sierra Dawn, and I'll be leading you through the stakes, the format, and some of the changes we made coming into summer. In spring, we saw eight teams contest four promotions into the NACL. For summer, we have a total of six teams, all vying for two spots. The two lowest placing NACL teams from the summer regular season, and the four best teams from the NACL Open Qualifiers. These six teams are placed into a double elimination bracket with the qualifier teams playing a best of three against each other to start. The qualifier teams were ranked by total points earned across both open qualifiers. There will be four rounds of gameplay with the first two rounds being best of threes after which the remaining rounds will be best of five. The teams coming from NACL will have a chance to only need two wins to make it back, while the teams coming from qualifiers need to win three matches to make the jump to LCS Challenger Spring 2024. Those eliminated have the opportunity to challenge for their spot in NACL by taking part in the next split's open qualifiers. All right, guys, uh, that is what we have in store for us this week. Uh, Grapes kicking things off, too. I, I know that we have our four OQ teams playing today. Uh, what do you expect for the coming week? I feel like there's, you know, if we're talking about the qualifiers, there's one team that really stands above them all, and that is Mirage Alliance. We'll be watching them a little bit later. Everyone else, I'm very curious to see how they've been practicing over these last couple of weeks, because there has been a bit of a break for the LCS Finals coming back in to the promotion tournament. Um, I, you know, there's a lot of question marks that we're going to be answered here today. Yeah, well, just in case you didn't catch it in the video, we're going to put that bracket up one more time. And Elk Battery, want you to walk me through uh, at least what we have. Uh, the big key for me is that the left side of this bracket, so... Uh, if you are to the left of Supernova and Team Fish Taco for the upper and lower bracket, those are best of threes. The rest are best of five. So you have to win a best of five to get into Challengers League for next split. But uh, Elk Battery, oh, we did hear Grapes talking a little bit about uh, one of the OQ teams that a lot of people know. What are you excited about uh, coming into this week? I really just wanted to say we already have a better format than LEC just because you have to win a best of five to actually make it. So we're doing great there. Uh, but... For these, I have, I already did my bracket. I haven't posted it yet, but I have TA and Mirage coming out. Uh, or Winthrop, Ooh. sorry. Winthrop have been, you know, they've been something. I think when we look at the other qualifier teams, they did not have a great second qualifier. And so hopefully with the time off, a lot of them said that the switch in between OQ1 and 2 was a big problem for them. I'm looking forward to what they've done during this break, especially for a team like Winthrop, who has had so many resources from either their collegiate background or even their new coach. I'm looking to see what they can do with that time, hopefully given some, some Batman-esque prep time. And looking ahead to the teams that they could be playing against if they win today, Supernova and Taco, I mean, in, in the last split, we had three of those four teams from the qualifiers actually promote into the NACL. Yep. Yep. However, I do think that the strength of these teams are much stronger than the teams that we had coming down from the NACL last split. So even though I think I'm, you know, I'm representing the qualifiers a little bit, I know that some blood is going to be shed between our NACL brethren. Yeah, I think either way, we are in for a good tournament. Uh, we'll kick off today, but... 
before we get into the games, of course, us as casters, we had a little bit of a break uh, <laughs> between the end of NACL and now. So we had a lot of people exploring, going on missions, maybe even doing some dungeons. And I know that the LCS, you know, they had Freak and Azale, but here we have Kangas and Dexorex bringing you Bald Gate 3. Well, we have a wizard and a bard, so that means we have two open spots in the party for applicants. Let's bring them in, shall we? The uh, best class that um, describes Mirage Islands would probably be fighter. We are particularly good, like mechanically, so I'd put ourselves as the fighters. I think our team would be a trickery domain cleric, and we're just banishing the competition out of this round, bro. We're kind of like a bard. Kind of just chilling. We're kind of just like adventuring, you know? We like, don't really have like a lot of thought going to do it. We barely have like any thought while even playing. We're kind of just, 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 just there to be there. We like to just enjoy fighting. I don't know if we, I don't know if my team t thinks differently, but like we like team fights and like just skirmishes a lot. So I think in that way it fits the barbarian role. Probably barbarian, where like you fight and once you fight you get stronger. Our play style and our qualms, I think they're a bit, you know, barbaric. I'd say pretty crazy how we take games and stuff when it comes to like the mechanical execution on skirmishes and team fights we usually have the lead on our opponents we let it go out of control and then we play really aggressive and look to engage and fight whenever we want i'd say it doesn't matter for us like 5k gold or down 5k gold we're always fighting i'd say we're really a uh, fight heavy team and we like to bring the action to our opponents we just have quite an admirable playstyle, like just never really going down without a fight we have a good idea of what we want to draft. We have a good idea of what we want to do. And if we are allowed to play our own game, then I, I don't think a lot of teams could play, like could beat us at our own game. I'm going to ruin everybody in the laning phase. We are individually the best players. We have the solo kill king in the top and I've been solo killing people in the mid lane. The best team of the tournament besides us is rough because it would be either Supernova or TFT, uh, but they both have like bad players on both ends. So it's really a, a competition who's worse, you know? If you lose to me when I have 120 hours in Baldur's Gate in the last <laughs> month. That's just sad, honestly. We've been through a lot of struggles, yet we still remain like all with our pride and we always, you know, show up. I had an opportunity to potentially play in NACL uh, this split uh, on one of these teams and I chose not to because I thought the roster was not very good and I'd rather relegate them. And now two months later, uh, I am on the first place uh, OQ team and they are going to be relegated by us. I think we're just going to make three consecutive wins, honestly. I don't know. I feel like our motivations to win the split are out of spite rather than, oh, I want to get into NACL. We just had a lot of misfortune that it's like, okay, we just have to win now. Like it's too cringe if we don't win. From everything I've seen in our practice, it should be completely winnable and pretty straight path to victory and qualifications. Well, thanks everyone for applying. It's gonna be a hard decision to make. You won't want to miss it. All right, folks, thanks to Kangas and Deathstrax for putting that together. I, I feel like we learned a couple things about our players throughout yeah. that. I learned I needed to get a haircut before this show because the less hair, the better for this broadcast. Uh, Jesus. Oh, not not for us. Maybe maybe for when Kangas and Eric are on the show. But uh, for, for us, we're, we're rocking the new ones. I know you got new digs as well, so looking good. Yeah, I, I, I'm not parting with this anytime soon. <laughs> I, I can't grow any of this to balance it out, Fair. so I, I need this for my own sanity. Uh, but... Also, for our own sanity, we're going to fly some of the matches that we have coming up today in case you didn't catch it from the end of that video. We have been talking about the fact we have our four OQ teams that qualified. It's the privilege to play to compete for a spot in the LCS Challengers League in spring of 24, going up against each other in two best of threes today as we have Team Ambition versus Winthrop University at the first slot, followed up by Mirage Alliance versus Lit Esports as well. Uh, and guys, I want to get straight into our first matchup. Let's not waste any time here. As we've got the Collegiate Kids on the block trying to be the second Collegiate team to qualify for Challengers League up first, and that is Winthrop University. Oh my god. Well, what can we say about this roster that hasn't been said before? I mean, 
Winthrop, they tried in spring to make it, unfortunately weren't able to get up into promotion and qualify, but this time around, after their c -Low run, they seem to kind of come in with a brand new roster. We're seeing a lot of new faces that I think older people of the crowd may not recognize. And so this is going to be a really big jump for this organization and just for this uh, foundational collegiate roster that has won in the past. Yeah, and even though a, a new look for Winthrop, the players that you may have seen in the Challengers League before, Mobility just spent last split uh, subbing in for EG, Sword also previously of TSM and mm -hmm. YFAM. So you look at a lot of players of experience, but now transferring over to Collegiate, looking to make their way back into the Challengers League. Yeah, and guys, I know that with this squad, at least in the first OQ, uh, this is actually a rematch one of the finals that we yeah. had uh, for the OQs coming up as... Uh, I know you guys had front row seats to this one in what was a rather wild best of five between two teams that are going to be familiar with each other coming into this match. Ooh. Grapes, you, you were casting this one. This was I know. Uh, yeah. This is a, this is a really wacky series, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Winthrop overall have shown a lot of really good stuff. They play a very similar style throughout um, each time that they go through. I think Mobility uh, is a, a really big carry for this team. We're going to be talking about him as long as well as his bot lane opponent a little bit later. But uh, yeah, just looking at this roster top to bottom, I've seen a lot of consistency from this team overall, which is not something that we can necessarily say about our opponents today. <laughs> yeah, obviously TA go on to win that series, right? Going into the grand finals. And yeah. so Winthrop, they want to change history. They want to try to break that up and Hopefully we get something, you know, a little bit different from them, just because Winthrop have had a little bit of a lackluster back into the second qualifier. Yeah, uh, Team Ambition on our screens now, guys, as I got to say, a team that's a little bit younger when it comes to our OQ squad, yeah. uh, squad's a little bit less experienced, but I am looking at Levitate and Snow 2, uh, two players that actually qualified under Tony Top in last spring, and then also... Porsche in the top lane brings some of that cohesion experience with him as he has two titles under his belt in that neck of the woods. Yeah, we always have this conversation, which of these players are really trying to go pro? Who's really trying to take advantage of the situations that they're in? These five players all have that desire, and I think specifically down towards the bottom lane in Levitate and Snow. That is where I have my eyes on with this team. They promoted into the NACL with Team Tony Top. Unfortunately, the situation didn't work out for them, but they you know, kept their composure and made it right back here uh, and have a really good shot to make it back into the league again. They're actually a really fun bot lane to watch in spring. And so when we came into summer, I think us as a qualifier broadcast all agreed that this should be one of our premier bottom lanes coming into the tournament. And at least in OQ1, they delivered. They're another team that did experience a little bit of a slump going into the second qualifier. So for Team Ambition, I think there's a lot on the line here. They obviously won like we were talking about, but that second qualifier left a pretty sour taste for a lot of us. And hopefully for a squad of a lot of young guys that maybe don't have a ton of experience, Kachu, Levitate, and Snow are all relatively new. I think they're looking to try to prove themselves yet again here, specifically in the bottom lane, that they can make it. Yeah, and uh, I wasn't kidding when I was talking about, uh, you know, at Summer OQ1 as Team Ambition and Winthrop. Uh, again, a, a, a rematch of some of uh, the... I mean, it's no surprise, like, when you have a tournament like this, you get some of the better teams throughout both OQs competing yeah. uh, once you get here. But uh, this was a very close best of five series that we have seen before, Grapes. Yeah, uh, all went all the distance. It seemed like in this series, each team won a close game, each team won a stomp, and then game five kind of went off the rails. There was a lot of insane things that happened, but I think Kachu and Limo actually really stepped up in this finals, and if they want another yeah. ch a chance at beating uh, Winthrop here today, they're going to have to be a big part as well. When we saw them in the grand finals, I th the big thing for me was watching how the two different front lines ended up interacting with each other. Porsche does tend to have a bit more of a carry-oriented, more of a bruiser playstyle. We've seen Denethor on things that are akin to that, but more than likely he is placed on for the most part, it is a lot of Cassante by a very large margin, and he is very good at that champion. And I love yeah. watching how Denethor and Trickster brought out Frontline for their back uh, for their back end. Yeah, Denethor is a player for me, even, you know, casting the Collegiate Finals, uh, mm -hmm. when, you know, he was competing top four with Winthrop. He really stood out to me as a top laner. But taking it to Niles, which is something that uh, very difficult for uh, top laners that... Uh, really every level Boa Pro to do uh, throughout <laughs> the history that uh, Niles has been a very strong player and Denethor is someone that I really feel like has made a climb up the ladder quickly, has evolved from not being a one-trick and is 
kind of a, for me a, a, a sleeper narrative going into this series if he can make a difference in that top side is i think very highly of his play well, and the that's fun, good yeah the, the fun well, thing also like they're, they're gonna be playing against each other porsche and denethor a lot because then yeah. porsche of course part of ust winthrop obviously another top collegiate program you know maybe a preview of what's to come in CLO next year potentially but guys preview what to come uh we have been talking about the bot lane quite a bit so uh, we're going to leave our, at least before we dive into the draft, we're going to leave things with Mobility versus Levitate. It has been bot metal all year. I, I do want to note that we are actually on patch 3.16, uh, which is a big deal. I don't know many regions that are competing on this patch right now. Uh, so I, I got to say that when it comes to these two going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, patch read could be big. Kaisa, of course, is still very strong, but... I know that these are two marksmen that you guys feel like are very strong, but also have different styles and approaches when it comes to their team. Well, looking at the numbers, they are rather similar in a lot of instances. Uh, you look at Mobility, has a much higher KDA. He has some of the least or the lowest death numbers across all of our qualifiers. But that gold share is the biggest thing here. As Mobility, he gets the largest share on his team. And for good reason, he's a very strong marksman. And that's where we tend to see the difference between these two, where as Mobility, he does tend to get a lot more resources, especially when we look at Sword, who is much more of a supportive player for this team. Whereas Levitate, he has those pop-off moments, but you look at players like Kachu, you look at Limo, who sometimes will go for those aggressive like AP Gragas builds. Yep. He does a lot of the same things that maybe Mobility will do with some fewer resources. And the Levitate oftentimes has to kind of make those plays for himself, you know, playing a lot more champions like Kai'Sa throughout that second qualifier. Uh, and, you know, sometimes those plays go well, sometimes they don't, which is why the KDA yeah. may be a little bit lower. But I think that ability to really make plays and decide when to go in for his team is a key uh, trait that we're going to see and maybe a bit of a difference between these two marksmen as we head into the series. He definitely really stood out to me on the Lucian in that first OQ. Yeah. And now with a different squad and team Ambition, we're going to have to see how Levitate and Snow fare as we're going to be going into the draft of Game 1 as Team Ambition will be looking to take down Winthrop University in this best of three. Winner moves on to the upper bracket in best of fives. Loser has to play for their lives later on in the tournament. Grapes and Elk, take it away. Oh man, I am so excited. Thank you, Cubby. Let's hop into the draft. Winthrop on the blue side, Team Ambition over on red. I think this is the first time we've seen these two teams play since that qualifier one final. So I, it was super close then as we have alluded, alluded to multiple times, but now on a different patch, you know, different champions maybe in play. Who knows what can happen between these two teams? You know, funnily enough, I love that Cubby at the end there brought up the Lucian kind of hover. When talking to a couple of teams, everybody was saying Levitate is good, but it feels like he's mostly a Lucian one trick. And even speaking to him during the offseason, even going into summer, he said the biggest thing I worked on during all of this was increasing my champion pool. Now, we saw the bot meta. There's a lot of Kai'Sa. There's a lot of Zaya. So in terms of being able to actually flex a lot of that, I think he has shown some of it. He has been mostly been put on Zaya for his team. But then we look across. He has an Ash game. He is not putting as many games on Zeri, and I'm interested to see just because we came into this patch, we didn't get to do much of a breakdown, but the Caitlyn buffs are going to be really interesting, and we're looking at the melee mid laners here, which are very big focuses when we look at someone like Kachu. Yeah, you know Riot's got to get ready for Worlds, so Silas and Akali <laughs> getting those little taps up, and very helpful for some of our qualifier teams, especially Team Ambition. Kachu has been exceptional on these melee picks. We have not seen them taken away on uh, uh, in the ban phase yet for Winthrop, but maybe that is something that is targeted here. Tristana for Sword has been a key pick alongside that LeBlanc, so I'm not surprised to see those taken away as we head into this draft. Ooh, and I was wondering what Winthrop were going to do about the jungle situation. Lima, when you look at his match history, it is 10 games of Sejuani <laughs> yep. and then 7 games of Maokai. So taking that away as well as then banning the Sejuani, I think is a heads up play. Most of the time, it has been Lima then going down to picking up the Gragas or the Wukong. And so we'll see what that ends up meaning for Kachu. Maybe it does open up for a Yasuo angle like we've seen in other series for Kachu. But... TA, we'll have to also see what they get for their bottom lane here, as Rel, a great flex between these two. Yeah, Snow 2, very confident on this. I'm sure Limo can play it in a pinch as well. Just a reminder, even though down in the overlay it did say patch 13.14 for just a second, we are on 13.16, the yep. one that just came out, which does feature buffs to the Caitlyn, to the Akali, to the Silas, which is why we're talking about them in the first place. <laughs> um, and none of them have gotten picked up just yet, but we have to wait and see. We're getting Zeri in the first game of the, of the progression tournament, guys. We've... Something Nothing's never changed. changed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, death taxes and uh, Zeri, certified Zeri moment. So we'll see uh, a little bit of a weaker laning phase, but we can kind of 
get a glimpse as to what TA are going to be able to do. I think that you already have some pretty okay engage uh, with the Rel or Winthrop. I want to see what their mid jungle is going to be as we haven't seen Sword really have too many of the mid lane like 80 picks. Like you said, it was a lot of Tristana, but aside from that, he's been opting for more supportive picks like the Annie, like the Nico, and even moving towards Galio, which is something that we saw back in his TSM Academy days as well. Yeah, uh, that is kind of why he shifted over to support because he has been that great playmaker and you know maybe doesn't always uh, do well in that laning phase. But Ooh. speaking of the early, I mean, speaking of on the other side, we have an Ivern lock in that does send the Rel down to support. Limo playing this, I don't know if he's picked this up yet. This is normally a Trickster yeah. champion. Yeah, Trickster has at least one game on this, but. Uh... I, Limo has not kind of shown up on this one. And so we saw in OQ2 a couple of our players picking up the Ivern. I was wondering coming in just because of how strong the champion has been in almost every single playoffs that we've seen. And for Limo, he does tend to be that engage option for them. So I think giving the keys over to Snow saying you're going to be in charge of us going in will be interesting as we've had questions for this bottom lane all of the second qualifier we saw porsche take a little bit of an absence from this roster they spoke about the difference in comms i'm interested to see what we get from them as snow in particular i've been wanting to see step up considering what we got in the first promotion tournament yeah i mean he has those flashes right on the playmakers recon is definitely a specialty of his while that will be played by chookies as well as that rel uh but sometimes it has seemed like these players on TA were not on the same page like they were when they did take the championship in that first qualifier. Mm -hmm. And we'll see maybe uh, with some more comfort unlocked here for Team Ambition, specifically in that bottom lane, it can help them out a little bit more. You can see those melees targeting wow. Kachu in the second ban phase uh, as mid lane remains a highly contested selection for both of these squads. A lot of AP mids as well. So I think this obviously favors uh, Kachu a little bit more just because we have seen so many different looks. Echo also also received a buff on this patch, but I don't oh, know yeah. if you're really going to want to be able to play that with an Ivern. So for Winthrop, looking towards Swords Pool, looking towards what Denethor is going to, going to want to pick up here as well. We talked about it during the pre-show there, but a Camille one trick and solo queue, bring that over. I think even into the Renekton, you're perfectly fine with playing more Cassante, which has oh. been the pick. Oh my God. Is that Denethor. a win? Okay. Denethor they slammed it. That was an insta-lock right there of that Quinn. This is a classic counter matchup. It's very hard for Porsche to play this game. I just was not expecting this because of, you know, I don't I don't think we've ever seen Denethor play this champion before. Yeah, uh, all right. All right, cool. So we're getting yeah, the throw, Quinn. Throw all the prep it out will the window. mean Damn. that Winthrop are very, very damage heavy. Yes, they have the Maokai and the Rakan that are going to be able to be able to provide engage. But the important thing for Winthrop is going to be controlling space. You have the Maokai. You even have Quinn who can provide vision as well. These are going to be very important keys for them if they want to have a successful team fight and objective setup. Speaking of putting the keys into somebody's hands, Kachu locking in that Yasuo on R5 to finish off the draft wow. with Team Ambition. Uh, one of his most played champions, one of his favorite champions for sure. Uh, and Kachu is a very important part to this Team Ambition roster as well. He's the <laughs> only player who stuck with the organization from spring to summer. Seems like the team and the staff really trust in him to play the things that he is good at. Uh, and he's got a, a good vehicle to do so in that Yasuo. And it's so cool to watch Kachu as someone who uh, hopefully we'll see in, in a couple of our interviews later, but he is at Maryville currently. He is currently under get back and we are kind of waiting to see when Kachu is going to debut just because he has been such a unique mid laner here in the qualifiers. Like you said, came in for TA when Town got moved up to the CLG Faith roster in spring. And so far, Kachu has been so pivotal. We talk about how important Levitate is, but Kachu kind of live or die by this guy with how different his champion pools. We talked about him being a melee specialist. So here on the Oswo, this should be a very good game for him. He has an Ivern in his back pocket of Rel as well. And a lot of the, what Oswo wants to do, plays perfectly into what Winthrop has. Very excited for this matchup to start off. Winthrop University versus Team Ambition as the summer promotion tournament has officially gotten underway. Right now, a very standard setup. Don't want either of these teams to play too aggressive because we want a competitive series between these two teams. Uh, but I mean, I'm just really excited. A rematch of the finals once again. So yeah. it went five games last time. Hopefully, it goes three here today. If you got a problem with aggressive play, you sure? Uh, you, you yeah, it, it is, results you know? in some one-sided opportunities sometimes. No, look, it, as long as they're all both playing super aggressive, as well as they're playing smart 
I think you're allowed to do that. Uh, standard five point here, an early ward for Team Ambition, just to make sure that Trickster does not cross over. When you are playing against Ivern, it is a little bit tricky. Obviously, he can't actually auto attack any of these uh, camps. And so, already seeing Trickster, Denethor moving in as well. They just want to take away these top side camps, really put Porsche on an on a island here. As some early trading starts us off here in the mid lane, Denethor going to come down here, forcing Sword down to half HP. He has to flash very early on. So Denethor getting a summoner spell out of TA early. But before we go any further, looks like Trickster stealing away that Raptor camp, maybe looking for a bit of a play oh in the mid no. lane. Oh no, he doesn't know he's on a war the entire time. We'll have also seen Limo cross over to his top side here. Trickster has a few options. He is level two, so he doesn't have that much combat power. But you're already seeing that Limo is just moving on. Before we move on, though, we can take a look at Hachu, the mid laner here for TA, and his thoughts on the patch as, you know, it's been rather effective for him. Yeah, I think so, honestly. Because those champions I've been playing for a lot, and I've climbed really high with them too. So I think draft-wise, it might not help, but when we get to stage, I, I'm pretty sure. I'm definitely, like, 100% sure that it will help. Yeah, and even though Yasuo didn't get a buff specifically on this patch, you did see target spans towards that melee champion pool. Uh, yeah. So already playing a role here. The Silas, like we were talking about, and yeah. hopefully we'll get to see a little bit of a Kali and Echo from some of our mid laners here in the promotion tournament. Limo already going for some early invades, but we're looking at where the lanes are right now. Top lane getting pushed in, but look at these junglers. They're nowhere nearby. Even bottom lane could potentially move over as... Oh, Ooh. Oh, up on the top, uh, bottom lane though, Levitate already chunked down pretty low. It is a 2v1 around the red buff as Kachu had priority and is able to push Trickster away from his own uh -oh. red buff. Limo will smite it away, that is a steal, but now the rest of Winthrop may have arrived. The double Bramble Smash will knock Limo back, a flash forward from Mobility, but Trickster is very low. Wait a Sword minute. might actually go down here first, but the rest of the Winthrop bottom lane finally coming into play. Here they comes Snow and Levitate, the flash over, Limo going for the blast code, but it will be first blood for Winthrop as Levitate trades on the jungle on the backside. Sword with a massive engage, so we'll find that first kill as Sword falls, and now Chucky's in the big, big bad spot. He goes down. It is three to one team ambition, and they're not Ooh. done just yet. Mobility picks up the kill, but he will be able to escape. Five kills in the first three minutes. Wow. Okay. We've we've got this already started. And we thought top lane was going to be fun with a quit up here. Already moving in. Really good trading coming out from the Winther bottom lane to hold TA in place. But we got to see how important Yasuo is in all of these fights. Look at how much this wind wall coming out from Kachu is able to block. There's no charm. There is no damage coming out from Sword. So now they're just waiting for mobility to get into place. And I very realistically thought that they could have turned this. The Ivern Shield is so impactful at every stage of the game. And Snow 2 comes with a great engage. Yeah, that, that crash down from Snow did wonders, as you can see in the bottom half of your screen. The jungler's still fighting it out, but getting those kills onto the Marksman, where both TA and Winthrop are going to be very important. Those are the players that we were hyping up at the start of this game here, Dimitri, and they both have participated in two of the first five kills. Oh, man. Limo can't even, he's like, guys, can I, I can't auto attack the, I can't auto attack it, guys, I can't get away from it. Oh, Levitate's in a really bad spot now. Yeah, Chucky's lands a grand entrance. That is an easy shutdown over to Mobility. As they even that kill count up at three. Meanwhile, in the top side jungle, Kachu has caught Trickster out. And I'll pick up another one. What's going on here, man? What, what are we doing? I, we're, we're getting action. You said, hey, maybe we don't want to see some aggressive plays. But I say it's the first day of the promotion tournament. Let's see our qualifier teams kind of put it all, all out on the field. And we can reel it back in afterwards. So already taking a look now that we have a little bit of a reprieve. People are recalling. We've got death timers kind of running a little bit longer as the game goes on. Like we're talking about, we're five minutes in. We'll just barely kind of pressing each other, but we got seven kills and a lot of them focused around this mid and bottom lane. As Kachu getting a lot of resources and as a mid laner who has been very, very hyped up coming into this program. And when you're on these melee mids, getting an early advantage is very important. We've seen yes. multiple instances where Kachu goes like 0 and 8, 0 and 9, 1 and 10, just because he is unable to get that early advantage and then. You know, once you're already behind, kind of hard to snowball as that melee, but 2 0 and 2 to start things off already has that Berserker Greaves. We'll be in a great spot for the rest of this game. I remember that teamless revenge game. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't pretty. <laughs> yeah, you know, that just happens. He's a Yasuo player through and through, right? He, 1 in 10 or 10 in 1. That's just how it goes. And so far, 
doing a really good job there. What I want to see from Winthrop on the opposite side is how they're going to be able to unlock this mid jungle because of how much potential they have to affect the rest of the map. Yeah, bot lane play here. Snow with the crash down mobility. Stuck between three members of Team Ambition. The Ignite's already ticking. When does that drag back come? It will not as a shutdown goes towards Levitate. I feel like the bot lane here has just had shutdowns for like the past four minutes. It's been back and forth, <laughs> right? Mobility got one on the Levitate. They then are able to trade that. So now opening up for the Dragon. It is a minute and a half before the Herald as well. And that means that Flash for Mobility probably not going to be up in time. And I'm wondering what TA are going to be able to do about that just because, hey, Winthrop, they've been pushing on top side. You see Denethor already has a lead. If they can't secure this Herald, they're in a very big, uh, kind of kind of bad spot. Spawn about 90 seconds, but even in the mid lane, Kachu has that priority. Porsche now has time to shove a wave in as Denethor got chunked down to about half HP. This is looking very good for Team Ambition at this point. You're, you're, the lanes that you're supposed to lose aren't losing too hard, and the lanes that are you know, supposed to do well, definitely off to a great start. We'll see what Winthrop are able to do. Obviously, we put a lot of pressure on, or a lot of spotlight on mobility. Players also like Denethor, who have been performing, but maybe are a little bit newer. Mobility, previously on that Evil Genius's Challengers roster that, you know, hey, we saw him as a substitute. He stepped up towards the end of the season, was looking really good. Our big question for mobility coming back into the qualifiers was, how are you going to be able to bring that experience, that level of play here? And so far, stats-wise, he's been great, but we want to see him step up in big team fights where he has a massive influence. He has been someone who plays very safe, and sometimes that has been to the detriment of his team. Yeah, it seems like Mobility and Levitate, kind of on the opposite ends of the spectrum, as we alluded to in our head-to-head -head discussion during the pregame. Mobility will stay safe, maybe not always be that big difference maker, while Levitate has some hit moments now and then, but will be able to always make himself the most important member of a team fight. And that is the difference that separates these two marksmen right now. One of them has a little bit of challenges experience, the other promoted in. Uh, and again, going to be crucial parts to this series as both of them already have some early kills. It's so weird to think that Levitate and Snow are the ones that are bringing a lot of that like promotion experience. I know. Right? Like we're, we're like, oh, Levitate didn't really have a career before this year. He was playing over on because, yeah, until UCSD, then. like he or not UCSD, but he was playing on uh, University State of California, like. This guy was really kind of like on a lower tier roster and then suddenly got picked up for that Tony Top that we were talking about for promotion. And now, for the side of Winthrop, they're losing that Rift Herald. We talked about this before, but they're nowhere near this objective. Denethor, yes, his wave is pushing away from him, but he knows that there's people on his side of the map. And while all of this, they move their bottom lane into the mid. They have Winthrop now, who is picking up some ways, but they yeah, shouldn't be able to, to get much on the bottom lane turret. Levitate dashes away from the grand entrance, but Snow will get locked up and taken down. Maybe the crash down connects the final pick of the Ignite from Sword. Will secure the fourth kill for Winthrop. It is the one kill in response for the Herald as Levitate will be able to make it down to the bottom lane. All right, remember, that was a lot of minions lost there for Levitate during all of this play. He's gonna actually just chase him down with a lightning crash. Yeah, popping the ulti, but does he know the rest of Winthrop are here? Dash away from the engage of Chookies, but now Trickster coming into play as well. Uses the cleanse, and with the flash, will actually Whoa, be able to escape the wait. knockup. Here comes Limo with the Q. Will Trickster end up going down? That final zap does not do the deed, but Trickster is at about one HP, and here comes the rest of Team Ambition. Kachu looking to dash through the wave. The final Q from Limo will secure the kill as Team Ambition turn it around. Levitate that played that so so well, a lot of patience showing how much mastery he has over a champion. Not a lot of our AD carries were playing in spring, but really good job to just hold his summoner spells, wait for the perfect moment. And I love how aggressive he was playing up against mobility, wanting to push the tempo of the game, making sure that bottom lane, you are not just getting free waves. I'm going to trade with you on every wave. Make sure that you're paying attention. Big point here for Winthrop now as, yes, that was a loss, but it was a very big win for Mobility individually as he was able to get so much gold for him. I mean, I thought this was another one of those levitate in moments. We go a little bit too aggressive, but he's just able to play on a knife's edge so perfectly, knowing that he has both of those summoner spells and Limo on the way. Yeah, I think, personally, I would have loved to see him play a little bit more of trusting of Limo, especially because Limo then ended up flashing. If he's able to stand his ground, I think this is a turned kill for Trickster instead of waiting for Limo to find a magical connect, an auto attack. But either way, still played really well, and Team Ambition are keeping the gold lead at least even. We're expecting for Winthrop to really do a lot of damage in the early game here. This dragon is spawning in a minute. You take a look at that total gold. 
if you're a Winthrop fan, you are not happy right now. But Team Ambition are, you know, all rally go. Let's go, boys. Like, Yeah, and, and once again, the main characters of this game at the top of that gold leaderboard, Levitated Mobility, going to be huge as we get later on into game number one. As the action just seemingly not stopping in the bottom lane. Snow using the Hex Flash to get a little bit aggressive. That Dragon spawning in third sec 30 seconds. Uh, so both of these lanes fighting for that priority. All right, Team Ambition. They should not be allowed to walk into this river. You already see, now you have Sword who's sitting in Fog of War. He will throw out a charm, and that is going to be a death sentence for Team Ambition. You have Maokai, which we've been talking about basically all year long at this point. And if they're able to find all oh, the Rue Caller. Connects onto Sword. He's able to use the Spirit Rush to get away. The Dragon spawns in 10. Kachu does not land the knockup onto Sword, yeah. but will gain that Pryo in the mid lane. Daisy still up and running, ready for an opportunity to be big in a potential fight. Kachu looking for that plate, and then business right back to the Drake. I'm looking forward to what Denethor can do with this lead, because so far, he has a small CS advantage, he has a small experience advantage, but I wonder if he's going to move down, and if TA can keep Daisy alive, if they can keep this timer up, that should be them being able to move in, you know, keep a numbers advantage, or at least keep it similar with each other. Seems like they're just going to be going for plates here. I really wish Winthrop would have played with their item advantage. You already had mobility with the Kraken Slayer. He has ult, he has flash. You had a lot of advantages ready for you as Levitate is still waiting to pick up his first item. That should have been their play. And now they lose position over this uh, river. And now they're going to have to fight through. Get into that mix. Sword is half HP, doesn't have ultimate. Neither top laner has teleport, so this will not be a 5v5 breaking out. Team Ambition go on the defensive, actually, as Winthrop arrived. They know that Mobility and Chookies are still very strong as a Ooh, pair, top lane, top and so they will seed pressure. Meanwhile, up in the top lane, some dueling happening there, but it will be the Dragon secured for Winthrop. I think he's going to look for it. He's got one more auto attack in. Porsche. He's got to run. He has the flash. He pops oh! the Dominus at the last second to survive. Right on the limits once again up in the top <laughs> lane. <laughs> well, he also just used TP, and this wave is uh, not looking great for him, so... Great job coming out from Porsche. That's Denethor now still exerting some of that lead that we expect from this matchup. 30 up on his opponent. Only has about a plate, but we really need to see him kind of start to step that up. Already now finishing the static shift here 13 minutes in, so we'll always be able to push. And any time that Porsche doesn't have teleport, I really want to see Denethor move out of lane. Something yep. that, you know, when you're playing the Camille, you can play that side lane style, but hopefully we're starting to see that move on and kind of Use some of those strengths you have from that champion onto others. Yeah, playing around that ultimate, using the wave clear, clear out a wave, head down into the mid lane. See if you can find an opportunity. That has to be the play for Denethor. On the Quinn, a champion that, again, we just have not seen from him. It's, it's a really great character arc kind of from him because known for <laughs> being uh, kind of a bit of a one trick and now able to flex around a ton of different champions to get himself as much of an advantage as possible. And. You know, not only eyes on him, but the rest of Winthrop, right? Like, this is a, a roster that, while it is very new for the Collegiate squad, they are looking to try to uphold a lot of the prestige that, you know, we see from Winthrop as, as you're just getting a very cheeky knockup. You have the Rift Herald spawning in a few minutes. You have our bot laners still sitting there, just trading waves. Mobility will have first move. And again, he has a very big spike right now compared to Levitate, where, hey, it's a static shiv. Well, I've got a Kraken Slayer, so the longer fights are going to go, I'm going to feel very comfortable as a marksman. Yeah, especially in those skirmishes. The, the Rift Herald spawning in less than a minute. Levitate and Mobility are both making their way to mid. Rootcaller lands onto the Zaya, but there's no follow-up here. Kachu searching for that Tornado. Will not find its mark. Daisy gets popped. But Team Ambition want to go for a fight, but the Charm lands onto Snow, and already TA maybe not in the best spot. Very dangerous position. You no longer have Daisy. Snow is very low. This should be Here's their gauge. Lands a knockup, but he actually gets canceled. Vimo still in a lot of trouble, though, as the Blade Caller comes out. Mobility picking up the first kill, and here comes Denethor with the incredible engage. They get one kill. The jungler for TA is down. Might be the signal for Winthrop to turn towards the Rift. A fantastic job coming out from Sword and the rest of the squad here at the Eagles for Winthrop. As they move in, they get damage onto Snow which takes away a lot of those engaged tools that we would have seen from Team Ambition. So we're told is going to be opened up. Porsche got a bit of a reprieve as being able to get the waves in and maybe take away some from Denethor, but now exercising that lead that we have been talking about, moving into mid lane, helps out the rest of his team. Went up now, let's see what they do with this Herald. Two minutes before the Dragon, they can knock down the mid turret, open up the rest of this map, maybe play a little bit more around Denethor for the time being. Uh, you know, you're feeling comfortable now. 
And man, this is exactly what I wanted in this first game to kick off the promotion tournament. Our two finalists from Qualifier 1 coming back and playing just as close of a series as we saw the last time they faced off. Only 200 gold separates our number two and three seeds from NACLQ. And I think these fights are going to get even crazier. Look at the uh, the main carries for both of these teams here, Auk. They're both in really, they're all in really good spots. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the fact is, is that Sword is holding his own right now, which is not something that we've been able to say throughout all of the qualifiers. I love, thank you to our production team for showing this. I was going to say, I don't think we've really seen the gold graph or the gold advantage grow much higher than a thousand and you can see it right there reflected this has been a very back and forth game between these two and for sword we expected him to play a little bit more of a supportive champion yes Ari can be that setup engaged he can be a threat in fog of war but he's also holding his own versus Kachu which so far throughout the qualifiers we have not seen he has been one to drop waves move into sides he's been one that is always willing to drop any bit of his resources to make sure that someone like mobility can carry and now with that Everfrost, we'll have the ability to clear even more of those waves, get more priority for his team, and you know, try to get them some more kills. Speaking of kills, on the top lane, Porsche has kind of had a rough time up here. Still down about 30 CS. He'll have to go for a base. If Team Ambition wants to fight around this third dragon, Porsche wow. going to have to utilize that TP soon. All right, so recognizing that, hey, Dragon Soul, at least for this game, is not going to be a big threat as we are able to split the difference with each team getting one. So. Wanting to open up this side of the map. Remember, by taking control of this top side, they make it a very long lane, which is something that Denethor can abuse. And by having so many uh, bushes up here in the top side as well, Alkai can do a very good job of taking control of this side of the map. Okay, maybe Porsche looking to re-engage with Kachu. Pops of Dominus to stay alive. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, no root lands in onto Snow in a bad spot. Limo has to flash away. Levitate dashing forward, trying to get some more damage down. He flashes oh, in on the sword, but Limo goes down first. Levitate already uses the flash, cannot finish off the kill onto the Ari, so it is just that one kill going Winthrop's way. Now Denethor roaming down from the top lane, looking to re-engage for his team. But there is not enough tools to start that fight once again. Just that one kill going over the Eagles. Limo unfortunately forgot where all the feathers were. He got a little bit lost in the sauce there. We even saw Levitate flashing forward to try to kill Sword. And that'll be finally the gold cresting over and a bit of a huge advantage now here for Winthrop. Think about the line of play there. Harold into top side tier one. Get a lot of damage onto tier two. Go move into mid. Get some summoner spells out of your opponents. And even get the third dragon. It's a big swing for them. And I think TA, unfortunately, being a little too aggressive, maybe feeling a little bit too much pressure. We have to take a look at this replay here. So they thought that they had the drop onto Chookies, but no one's here, man. Snow, you, you like there's just nothing you could do in this position. <laughs> Yeah, and then a really nice re-engage from both Snow and Chookies, finding Limo on that play. And even though a teleport does come out from Kashu, Team Ambition aren't able to find anything back. Oh, he just walks right out of the feathers. He thought they were going to expire, so no flash onto Levitate. There's no fl there's no teleport either here for Kashu, so he can't even really pressure a side lane like one of these bot lane tier 1s. I think TA got to calm down, you know, Porsche, someone who has been playing for a really long time, has been someone that has been very exciting as a prospect for top lane. He's holding his own. Yes, he's down 30, but the matchup right now is 0-0-0. Zero, zero, zero. I know we've been talking about Denethor, yeah. but he hasn't actually been able to, I want to say, meaningfully impact a team fight. He's brought a lot of side lane pressure. He's brought a lot of their ability to actually take down some of these structures. But KDA, you know, you're looking at the end of the game, you're going to be like, oh, I guess, yeah, I guess we just get his minions. <laughs> Is working towards that second item. Maybe a rapid fire, maybe something else will help him do a little bit more in, in these team fights on the engages for his team. But right now it is it? a bit of a gold lead expanding. What, what are we what are we looking at here? Is he caught you second item? Oh my god, okay. <laughs> well it's well, not it's not Evan Shroud or it's not even Shroud. Yeah, not on, even Shroud on Yone, so we're we're doing better we're doing At a least little a little bit, bit of damage. So obviously this does change up a little bit of what TA are gonna want to do, right? We talked about how strong Denethor is on the side. They've said, hey, at this point, Porsche, you're gonna be our engage bot. You need to be here for fights. We're letting Kachu get a lot of resources. He's on the split. He's starting to generate a small advantage as we're getting a little bit of that NARAM. We're seeing Winthrop and TA really fight over mid priority because they know they get one pick. They're able to set up for a bear in here. One pick, all it takes as that 20 minute mark has elapsed. And once again, it is Team Ambition looking to gain priority in the mid lane. Limo popping Daisy just to push the wave in. As now TA, Oz5, hovering towards the top side of the map. The Baron 
is available. TA want to force a fight. They try to lock down Daisy, and they do, making it once again that 5v5. Snow looking on the aggressive. I don't, I don't think what team in the mission should really go for this one. Winthrop are very strong, so we're going to go over. Laser Everfrost on it too. Chokies with the two-man knockup. And now Winthrop can try to hammer in Here the fire. Go. But Snow through the big engage. Kachu picks up the first kill. Mobility. And Levitates on touch. But Mobility with a huge flash blade collar will take down the enemy marksman and win the fight for Winthrop. No one was looking at this Zaya. And while, hey, Zeri, she needs some time to ramp up. I think Mobility says, I don't. I'm a whole different beast at this point. So Team Ambition, they lose another team fight here as Winthrop. Hey, it's two for two, but look at who's alive. Mobility. Yeah. Denethor is going to be able to catch this bottom wave. And it's going to be more than likely some more damage onto this mid-tier one. As we take a look, I mean, there's just no Daisy. Daisy is such a big component of an Ivern team composition. Yes, he's shielding, but Levitate is not dealing damage at this moment. And it's Sword who is. It seemed like Team Ambition a little bit indecisive on how they wanted to go for that play. Only after Winthrop engaged do they finally pull the trigger. And while they do take down Sword, we need to watch Mobility here on this play. He does go for that big blade collar right there, and Le Levitate just goes down. And it's one of the aspects that we've wanted to see for Mobility and his play. We wanted to see him step up in fights, play a little bit aggressive, get in the sauce, get in the mix. And hey, look, I'm just going to say, Yasuo as a champion will do that. We get to take a look at our subway damage dealt last team fight. It was a difference between our bottom laners. But you look at top lane, and uh, one of these guys is a beat ball sub. The other guy is, yeah. you know, kind of a lame BLT. I, I'm gonna, I'm, <laughs> I feel bad for Porsche. Hey, that's why you go to the matchup. Denethor finally able to show up and have a huge fight for his team. Did not result in the Baron going down, but now Levitate once again might be in trouble. Denethor really chasing him out here as Trickster was not going to press that twisted advance, but... Now it's Winthrop really taking control of this one. They're up about 1,500 gold. Feels like a little bit more. We talked about this in the draft as well, where Winthrop, their composition really works when you are ahead, when you have control of vision, when you have control of objectives, and when having the say as to whether or not TA can walk into a fight. They're doing excellently, specifically with Trickster here, who, hey, you just throw down a sapling, and now TA are like, well, can we actually walk into there? They've summoned the Daisy 20 seconds before the dragon here. Daisy is so important. I know we were talking about it in the last fight, but she is literally a sixth team member that you just have access to. And I think so far they've not been utilizing this ultimate to its full effect. But yep. now that you're here, you got the engage out of Chookies. Oh my god, like Daisy, look at her! Be in a bait. It's 5v5. Even though Porsche isn't, I'm uh, sorry, even though Kachu isn't there just yet, it is Team Ambition with the pseudo numbers advantage. They land the charm on a snow too, though. Winthrop Ooh, wants to start the engage. They one shot it before he can issue a single spell. And that is the first kill going over to the Eagles. Kachu immediately the flash punk, completed his teleport, and Denethor is on the way as well. Chokies lands the quickness. Porsche is looking to go down, uh, but he finally finds a trade on the Trickster. Levitated, pops the lightning crash. Can Team Ambition turn this fight around? Not just yet. Mobility popping the feather storm and popping off in the team fight. It's a shutdown going over to Denethor as Winthrop make their way towards the Drake. There's just not enough lockdown. Snow falling there is a big piece of the puzzle here for Team Ambition. As they'll go ahead, take their third dragon of the game. And honestly, they have double marksmen. Even without Trickster, who is coming up in 10 seconds, this should be their ability to actually threaten for this. If you take a look at this replay here. Oh, it was blind. Yeah. Oh my god. Maybe it was just like the ward being placed, that instant bit of vision you get. Either way, it was a great find for Winthrop Eagles. And now they're just getting picked apart in this team fight. If you take a look in the picture in picture, there's a Baron dance going on. It looks like Winthrop maybe wanted to start it off. End up pulling away as Snow and the rest of Team Ambition making their way down there. But Winthrop winning yet another decisive fight. Up two and a half thousand gold now. Team Ambition, they're gonna have to make a move soon. Emo turning towards the Baron. This might yeah. be their play. They have to do this right now. And Sword, maybe they can get his teleport out as he's going to be recalling and getting his items in. They have Daisy who's frontlining, waiting for Kachi. Remember, his knockup is so massive, but this is possibly going to be one of the last important team fights for Winthrop. No ulti on Chookies. Baron at 3,000 HP. Team Ambition looking to burst it down. Snow with the engage. Team Ambition secure the Baron buff, but Snow goes down instantly as Winthrop have a number advantage. And Team Ambition might be fishing a barrel. Levitate popping the lightning crash. Already picking up Chookies. Denethor. 
trying to fire back in. The blade collar lands onto mobility. Levitate flashes away. Kachu goes down. Winthrop are still four strong, and mobility is unstoppable in this game. The e Turo Baron buff blocks team ambition, but Winthrop once again win the fight. Oh man, they're just getting it. There you go. There's your Turo Baron buff, like we were saying. The Baron does go over to Team Ambition, but it is a single member who is rocking purple capes at this point. Winthrop, they don't care. They got their advantage. They got all the gold they could have potentially have needed. Some of them had already gotten their recalls in, so they're just going to continue to push. Three minutes before the Dragon, let's see how much structure damage they can actually get done here. As Trickster is now facilitating between two different waves. They got the mid-tier one, and now they're going to move on over and get more gold here for the AD carry. Mobility really taken another step here in this game. We hyped up the bottom lanes as being the difference makers here. Seven, one, and seven. And the crucial thing here, Dimitri, it's not just Le uh, Mobility picking up kills whenever he's able to. He's the one starting and, and really laying down the hammer in these fights. I love it. I love that he's able to kind of hold his ground. He had a couple of wards for us. We did our all pro votes. Yeah. You know, we were saying like, hey, our top three, Neo, City Witty, and Levitate, Mobility was very loud. He was saying, hey, I should have been on that list. I think that I was a player that was right below someone like Neo on Mirage Alliance. And now they're making oh, it yeah. on Levitate. Not, not a good case for Levitate right now. He gets caught out by Chucky. Instantly one shot. Sword picking up the first kill for Winthrop as he looks to continue to chase forward with the Spirit Rush. Doesn't have any more charges as the Root Caller will slow him down for now. Trickster hops the ulti. They're going to try to chase down the Ivor. He's just too fast, man. Popping a bush. Now it's 4v1. Team Ambition looking like they're going to leave their jungler out to die, focusing their attention towards the side lane instead. It'll be the kill once again going for mobility. They'll trade it for a bot tier 1. Oh my god, wait, they make this teleport as well. They want to find Denethor, get something. Off the cleanse, he's able to dash away. He picks up the kill onto Snow. Porsche able to get back onto him. One more auto or the burn will give a 950 sh 50 gold shutdown over to the Croc. A little bit of respite here for Team Ambition. Yeah, I just don't know how worth it it's going to be at this point. Denethor, the items. Porsche just now hitting level 17. Oh god, oh They're no! Going right onto the base. Oh no, Levitate just gets one shot. Three members of Team Ambition are down. It is Kachu who is in bottom lane and Porsche who is trying to make his way back towards the base. Inhibitor number one in the top side is going to fall. Winthrop will not make a push for the end, but they've taken another huge step towards it. Oh wait, caught you, caught you, caught you, caught you. You fishing, brother man? Okay, I thought he was gonna go for it there. Winthrop now 4,000 gold in the lead. Levitate falling yet again. Really big series for them as, you know, we talked about, hey, Levitate, he's that guy that will get into a team fight. He will get in the mix, but so far, it's just so difficult for Zeri to actually outrange someone like an Ari who's waiting in Fog of War. And a lot of great shutdowns, or a lot of great crowd control coming out from the likes of Trickster and Chookies. 30 seconds before this dragon. This is a soul here. Obviously, cannot give this over if you are TA, but you're also thinking, can we actually fight? You have to be able to outplay so tremendously. My mobility is a full item ahead of his counterpoint. Yeah, and, and in the bottom, in the support role as well, Chookies has been able to find huge engages for his team, while Snow has gotten caught out just a couple of times. Kind of happens when you're behind as a support player, but. Not voting well for TA okay. as they try to find their way towards the pit. Daisy's been popped, but even in this you know, pseudo numbers advantage, as we said, it is Winthrop still taking control. I'm gonna say there's no charm available for Sword in a small instance, so something that they could have looked for. Kachu is on nice. vision. Really nice reactions able to get this, but Snow is yet again 40% HP. They cannot make this engage. There's They're no Baron for them to play. So it's now a soul for a team that has so much damage for a Denethor, for Sword and Mobility. This is going to be massively game changing. I mean, the game was already very massively in Winthrop's favor, but now they have a buff that you can't calculate on a gold advantage. They're building so many damage items as well. Like, Team Ambition, I think they're just kind of like, okay, let, what are we looking for for game two, guys? Seems like we're going to be reaching that level very, very soon. Bot lane, mid lane, all being targeted here for Winthrop University. They are again oh. locked down Sword before, sorry, Snow, before he's even able to use that crash down. He has to use defensively just to get that shield. Sword using the Blast Cone over with the Enhanced Infernal Rift, just adding to the pressure that Team Ambition are facing. They're going to use this to open up another Gotta inhibitor. Go. Actually, look for an escape. That's a charm. Oh, on the yeah, Porsche. charm on the Porsche. He pops a dominant to stay alive. Team Ambition, this might oh, be their so. luck. Oh, here comes the engage. Kachu finds Denethor. And Snow Sword will go down too. 
now Team Ambition in a 5v3. They're looking to continue the chase. Trickster, Choki's mobility, they're all on the run, but Snow 2 still has the ability to engage very soon. Levitate hops over the wall. He's looking for blood. They okay. find the slow on the Choki. Mobility's gonna have to be huge in this fight. He pops the Feather Storm. Will not be locked out of target yet. Picks up oh! one, picks up two. Mobility, Mobility is going to turn this game around for Winthrop University. Levitate gets one on the Jookies, but going golden, Tachi will fall. It is the Battle of the Marksman once again. Trickster will lock down the Zeri. Nexus Tower is going down. Mobility is going to win this duel as Levitate has no mana. It is a huge win for Winthrop on the turn. He said, screw your head to head, man. I am that guy. He is winning every fight for his team. He is standing his ground. 11 and 1 on the Zaya. I think a lot of people might be able to take away some of that. They're just saying, oh, well, Zaya is a safe AD carry, but he is standing in the mix. He is getting in those fights. I love this for mobility. It's only one game. I want to see a little bit more, you know, increase that sample size. I mean, what more do you need? This is the level we're going to see from Winthrop. I mean, that, I'm, I'm feeling good about my predictions then. Baron going to be started up here by Winthrop. Three members now, two down for Team Ambition. They are in no position to fight for this objective. It'll be another Turo Baron buff going the way of Winthrop. Seven and a half thousand gold ahead. And they're looking poised to take game number one of this series. Now we get to see how they close out. It is a single wave in mid lane that has the inhibitor still alive. As you see now, Winthrop taking control of this top side of the map, sitting in fog of war. Snow has to be so careful. He has been caught out time and time again. He has been unable to really step up in these fights. And hey, that last fight was exactly what we wanted to see. It was kind of that combo that we were promised coming into this. Yeah, just Probably haven't been both. able to find all those pieces at the same time. And when they finally did, just a little bit too late, Limo again just chunks to below half HP. Kachu now in trouble as Winthrop going to make the final push. They knock oh the Yasuo no. back. He pops the GA, but now Snow going for the Magnus Storm. Mobility goes legendary. Force trying to dive on top of him, but you won't find anything against his Aya. It's a double kill for Mobility as the third inhibitor will fall. Sword connects the charm. It's another kill, and it might be the icing on top of the cake. Mobility not even going to get eye to Kachu as that is the clean ace coming through for the Eagles as they bought the first step of their revenge tour, taking game one of this series. We said it was going to be a long series. We saw it in that grand finals for the first qualifier in summer. Winthrop, man, they make it look easy here. 10,000 gold at the end of the game. And wow, what an insane performance from some of the Eagles. Yeah, you know, they, they lost that grand finals, but it was such a close series. They knew they had it in their grasp. And Winthrop taking control. They are one game away from moving on in the upper bracket and knocking the qualifier one champions down. We're going to take a short break. When we return, Copy will be back for our halftime show. Subway refreshed their ingredients, their menu, and now they're slicing their meats fresh. That's why their new Subway series subs are preferred by this champ. And this future champ. Pros who are talking heads prefer fresh sliced turkey. And pros who use their heads prefer fresh sliced ham. More deli meats are preferred by this QB. And preferred by his old backup QB. And if we prefer it, we know you'll prefer it too. Is this slice as good as your tennis slice? I can't answer that, but yes. 